Howdy, it's Kyle talking about North Carolina. It's a state that I'm fairly familiar with. I lived in Columbia, South Carolina for five years, and we would go up there all the time. And from where I live now in East Tennessee, if I drive an hour or so east up here, we'll be in the mountainous part of the state, and we'll go there a lot to go hiking and camping and paddling. And I just got back from a week-long road trip driving around the state, visiting different towns and different parts of the coastal area. So in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the geography of the state and what you might expect if you visit there. This video is going to be less formal than one of my state geographic profile videos. I'm not going to be going into great detail about the physical geography or the economy or the companies there or the agriculture, just more of a general overview of what it's like there. At the 2020 census, North Carolina had about 10.5 million people. And because it's growing, it probably already has about 10.6 million. It's the ninth most populous state in the country and it's growing very quickly. In terms of area, it ranks 28th in the US or 30th if you're counting land only. Even though it's in the smaller half of states in terms of area, because of its elongated shape, there are big differences between the western and eastern parts of the state. And as a bit of trivia, the state has exactly 100 counties. So I'm going to start talking about the state going from west to east, and that means starting with the mountains. I know I've been known to mispronounce things on this channel, but the correct pronunciation of the mountain range is in fact Appalachian. People in the north and west will usually say Appalachian, which hurts my ears to even say that, but I think the reason why people up north pronounce it incorrectly is because once you get north of West Virginia, the mountain range isn't known as the Appalachians, they're known as the more localized names. So you've got the Poconos, the Alleghenies, the Catskills, Berkshires, Green Mountains, and White Mountains, and those are all parts of the Appalachian mountain range. 12 of the 13 highest peaks in the Appalachians are in North Carolina, either partially or entirely and the one that's not is in Tennessee, with the highest of those peaks being Mount Mitchell at 6,684 feet. In this portion of the state is Great Smoky Mountains National Park, which is the most highly visited national park in the country. And you'll notice the biggest crowds at the park will be in the fall, especially during peak fall foliage season. However, you don't have to be in a national park to see the beautiful fall foliage. We've lived less than two hours away from the national park for eight years, but have only been there a couple of times. And that's because we go to Nantahala National Forest or Pisgah National Forest just outside of the park. It's the same beautiful scenery, but much smaller crowds. Lots of great hiking, backpacking, mountain biking, rock climbing. And because there's so much water in the area, it's one of the wettest parts of the country. You have a lot of beautiful waterfalls as well. Although I'm not a whitewater paddler, there is a lot of great whitewater in the region for kayakers. And we'll do some flatwater canoeing and canoe camping along Hiawassee Lake or Fontana Lake. And much of Fontana Lake is in Great Smoky Mountains National Park, so you can still be in the National Park but not be where all the big crowds are. The biggest city in this region is Asheville, which is one of my wife and I's favorite cities in the country. And on the pin map for where people want to live, my wife put hers right near Asheville. We're both kind of on the same page where we wouldn't want to live right in the city, but really close by. And the reason why we love Asheville so much is it's just a funky city with a unique character, and it's a center of counterculture for the southeast. It's really well known for its music scene, especially bluegrass, and there are a ton of street performers you're going to see there. It's home to the world's largest drum circle, and wherever you go, there's probably going to be music in the air. It's also well known for being a center for artists in the southeast. A lot of artists move there, and there's a lot of art galleries there as well. It's also known for a great microbrewery scene and just being overall kind of a weird city. And this is my favorite mural in town. I think this mural is a really good microcosm of the city. It's just a silly thing that most cities wouldn't really allow as one of their murals because most murals are kind of serious or very artistic or trying to make a statement, but this is just ridiculous. Unfortunately, a lot of square city slickers from Charlotte and Boomer retirees are going there and trying to change things and get rid of the street performers and just make things a lot different. But let Asheville be Asheville. There aren't many places like this left in the U.S. And about 20 minutes down the road along I-26 is a town of Hendersonville. Really nice small town. And it's much more normal. So if you want to be near Asheville but not live in all the craziness, Hendersonville is a great place. It's the center of the apple growing industry in North Carolina. There's a lot of great apple farms there and places you can go pick them yourself. And we've been there several times to go pick our own apples. It's a lot of fun. You get the really good ones that way too. In the northwest corner of the state is the college town of Boone, which is home to Appalachian State University. And this is a funky little college town. It's just a really small town with a fairly large university there. It really is a college town. And this area is well known for being one of the top areas for rock climbing in the U.S. I'm not a rock climber, but I have a lot of friends that are, and they go up to Boone quite often. Once you get east of the mountains, you get into the Piedmont. And the Piedmont is the area east of the Appalachians and west of the coastal plain. The westernmost big town in this area is Hickory. There's about 44,000 people there. 
And this is a pretty nice medium-sized town. The downtown has been fixed up a little bit. When I was just there, it looked like there was some recent development there. There's a little square that you could tell was kind of new. I'm not sure how it looked before that. But there were some nice boutique-y type shops and art galleries. I was really surprised to see these type of shops in a town like Hickory. So I would say compared to other cities in this size range across the U.S., the downtown is much more interesting and much more fun. And overall, I can see it being a nice place to live and you're surrounded by a lot of really cool stuff and not having to live in some of the bigger urban areas. About an hour or so southeast of Hickory is Charlotte, which is the largest city in the state. There are about 875,000 people to live there. The overall Charlotte metro area has just under 2.8 million, and some of that is in South Carolina, but the vast majority of it is in North Carolina. I think the downtown has improved a lot in the past 20 years. About 20 years ago, it looked like the city was going the same way as Dallas or Phoenix, just going big time sprawl and not really focusing on its downtown. However, there's been much more infill and a lot more people moving into the center city and a lot less sprawl, although there is certainly sprawl, but not nearly as bad as some of the other big cities in the Sun Belt. Like many other big cities in the U.S., there's been a lot of gentrification. However, I think it's been done pretty well in Charlotte. The biggest area for the gentrification is called Noda, or it's N-O-D-A, meaning North Davidson. There's been some very recent development here, and it's still going on right now. A lot of new stuff going up. But it's not a bunch of rich people buying up old houses and fixing them up and making everything more expensive. This was an area that was old workshops and warehouses and appliance repair stuff and machine shops and paint and body shops for cars. And a lot of those things went away. A lot of the stuff went out to the suburbs and just left it kind of empty. And so now these are becoming microbreweries and condos and this other kind of new stuff. And so when gentrification is taking over old buildings and old businesses that close down, it's not quite the same as people buying up old houses. There are some nice historic areas there as well, one called Dilworth, and just like pretty much any other city, the most historic parts are going to be pretty expensive. And there are lots of other cool individual neighborhoods throughout the city, and I think it's always a good sign for a city when there's a lot of different neighborhoods have its own little character. So just like everywhere else in the U.S., it's getting much more expensive, but Charlotte is still reasonably inexpensive compared to other big cities. About an hour and a half northeast of Charlotte is the Piedmont Triad. And this references the three main cities that make up this metro area, Greensboro, Winston-Salem, and High Point. And the metro area has a population of over 1.6 million. The largest of the three is Greensboro with about 300,000 people. It has a decent downtown for walking around, some interesting shops, and just west of downtown is the college town area for UNC Greensboro. And there was a much larger number of college-oriented bars and restaurants near the campus than I would have expected. Even though the city is too big to be considered a college town, it did seem like most of the nightlife there was oriented more towards the college students. About a half an hour west of Greensboro is Winston-Salem, the second largest city of the Triad, and there are about 250,000 people there. And this is where you had the big R.J. Reynolds tobacco factory. And at the south end of downtown is where you had the old factory there, but this one turned into some pretty cool shops and restaurants and an overall decent entertainment district. I was in Greensboro during the day and went to Salem at night, so it's hard to tell for sure, but it did seem like the Winston Salem entertainment and nightlife was a little more sophisticated than Greensboro. It seemed to be geared more toward the yuppie crowd as opposed to the hipster and college crowd. The Salem part of Winston Salem is an older part of town where you have the old Salem and where you have some people dressed up in period costumes. And it's home to Wake Forest University, which is a much smaller university than UNC Greensboro, so it doesn't have quite the same large college presence. And because of that, I think it gives a little bit of a different feel than Greensboro. But the two complement each other very well. And overall, I would say the metro area is a pretty nice place. High Point is the smallest of the three with about 115,000 people living there. And it's known as the home furnishings capital of the world. I'm not sure if that's really true or not, but there's a giant dresser you can take a picture of. And an enormous furniture store with another giant dresser out front of it. About an hour or so east of Greensboro, you get to Durham and the Raleigh-Durham Chapel Hill metro area. Raleigh is the state capital and the largest city in the metro area. There are about 468,000 people there. It's got a good downtown for walking around, some great restaurants and shops. Although I will say that the state capital building there is one of the least impressive ones in the country. There's also a decent music scene there and a pretty good art scene there too. But I think Raleigh is a great place and there's a reason why it's growing so fast. It's really similar to Columbus, Ohio or Austin, Texas, state capitals of major states with a major university there. There's a lot of high-tech medical stuff, a lot of other high-tech research stuff going on there. And the whole Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill metro area is referred to often as the Triangle as each of those three cities has a major university there. And right in the middle of the three cities is an area called the Research Triangle Park, which is, as you might expect, a big area for high-tech research. 
Durham has about 284,000 people and is home to Duke University, with Duke being a smaller private university and NC State being a larger public university, the college town areas around each have a little different feel. And then you have Chapel Hill, which is basically just a college town. It's home to the main campus of the University of North Carolina. And even though it's kind of a suburb these days, it's been sucked into the metro area. A lot of folks that have nothing to do with the university live there just because it's nice to live in that college town. But the downtown there, centered along Franklin Street, does have much more of a younger feel to it, much more of a party atmosphere. But at over 2.2 million people, the overall Raleigh-Durham metro area is growing very quickly and for good reason. About an hour south of Raleigh is the city of Fayetteville, which has about 210,000 people. It's one of the oldest cities in the state and has a very nice old historic district right downtown. It's a pretty cool old architecture. It's probably most well known for being home to the major army base Fort Bragg, which is currently in the process of being renamed. But because the town has a military town and doesn't have any major universities there, it does have a different feel than other cities in North Carolina. It doesn't have the high-tech medical stuff of the Triangle area. It doesn't have the big financial stuff of the Charlotte area. And it doesn't have the music and art scene like you'll see in Asheville. And as with many other military towns, the downtown isn't the main center of attention, of course, because a lot of the soldiers are on the base. So it doesn't really have a great restaurant or nightlife scene. But that just adds to all the variety of North Carolina. You have all these other cities that aren't military-oriented. Then you have a couple in the east that are, including Fayetteville. East of Fayetteville and Raleigh, you get to the part of the state where there are no more big cities, but there are a handful of bigger towns. One of which is Wilson, about an hour east of Raleigh. has about 48,000 people to live there. It's just an okay, nice little southern town, but one thing I wanted to show was this video of the Whirligig Park they have there. And this is a small park in the heart of downtown that has a large number of Whirligigs designed by Wallace Simpson. I happened to be there on a windy day, so it was really cool to see these things blowing around. They kind of clanked and creaked. I really liked hanging out there for a little bit. So if you're driving through North Carolina along I-95 and it's a windy day, I do think it's worth a little side excursion to go see the Whirligig Park in Wilson. About a half an hour north of Wilson is the town of Rocky Mount with about 54,000 people. And this town is well known for being kind of a rough place, perhaps the worst city in the state. And like many other cities in this size range that were dependent on one or two big companies, the company closed down, a lot of jobs went away, and the city went into an economic downturn. And so I was walking along downtown, which had some nice old buildings and stuff, but the majority of them were vacant. And it gave the town kind of a ghost town feel. But one thing that I found interesting about this empty downtown is that it didn't really look like it had been empty for a long time. You go to cities where there's been an economic downturn for many years, it just looks really, really bad. A lot of busted out windows, a lot of boarded up windows. However, here it didn't really look that bad. There were still some decent looking storefronts, even though the actual building was empty. So it had a different feel than many other cities that have gone through the same type of economic downturn. And even though it's probably the worst city in the state, it really isn't that bad compared to other worst cities in other states. There's quite a bit of poverty there. It's got a very high crime rate for a city of its size. And yet I've seen much, much worse. I think it's a good testament to North Carolina when the worst city in the state isn't anywhere near as bad as the worst city in most other states. My wife and I aren't exactly looking to move there anytime soon, but I can see based on where it is located geographically and fairly close to Raleigh, I can see it making a comeback. But for right now, it is pretty rough. And once you get east of Greenville, you get into the lower lying coastal plain. And North Carolina, I think, is the only coastal state where the least populated part of the state is the coastal area. Most coastal states, you have a large population cluster along the coast, but not North Carolina. The biggest city along the coast is Wilmington in the far southeastern corner of the state. There are about 116,000 people living there and it's growing quite a bit. It's one of my favorite cities in the country in this size range. It's very historic. It's often compared to Charleston, South Carolina, or Savannah, Georgia, being it's the old historic coastal city. Although the historic district itself isn't quite as large as those other two. It has a really nice waterfront area right downtown along the Cape Fear River. Some great shops and restaurants. And just a lot of cool old buildings if you're into old architecture. The beach town adjacent to it is called Wrightsville Beach. Really nice beach, big wide swath of sand. But by far, the worst thing about Wilmington and why I really couldn't live there is that it's a magnet for hurricanes. Because of the shape of the state and the shape of the coastline, it's just kind of sticking out there. And when hurricanes go up the East Coast, they often hit Wilmington or other parts of East North Carolina. So overall, a very nice part of the state that's growing quite a bit. But if you do live there, make sure you do have a plan for hurricane evacuation if need be. A little up the coast from there is the small town of New Bern. And this is a really nice small town with a great downtown and waterfront for walking around. A lot of nice boutique shops and some great seafood restaurants as well. 
And once you start going north up the coast from Newburn, it starts getting very rural. There's a lot of beautiful swampy areas and national wildlife refuges along the intracoastal waterway or just inland from that. I did some nice boardwalk trails at Pocosin Lakes, Swan Quarter, Madame Mesquite, and Alligator National Wildlife Refuges. And because it's swampy and not really with good beaches, you don't have many people visiting there. A lot of folks hear the word swamp and think negative things, but there are some really beautiful areas you can check out by walking on some boardwalk trails, not getting your feet wet and muddy. So if you're in the region visiting some of the beaches or some of the more touristy areas like Newburgh, don't skip on visiting some of these national wildlife refuges in the swampy parts of eastern North Carolina. But the main beaches in the state are known as the Outer Banks, and this is a long line of skinny islands that have some really nice sandy beaches along them. These are my personal favorite beaches along the East Coast, and probably only Florida has better beaches. But one thing I like about the Outer Banks is that there are no big cities there. It's all protected seashore or just small towns. It can be very busy during the summer, but if you keep driving farther and farther south, you get fewer and fewer crowds. The southern part of the Outer Banks is Cape Hatteras National Seashore and the very famous and picturesque Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. So those are the places that I want to go over when discussing the state, and there's way more to talk about. Many other towns, small towns, other natural areas throughout the state, but it's just too big of a state to go over everything. One thing you may have picked up on is just how close all these major metro areas are in the state. The biggest one is Charlotte. There's no space at all between Charlotte and Concord and Kannapolis up to Salisbury. Hardly any space between there and High Point, and there is no space between High Point, Winston-Salem, and Greensboro. Greensboro fades straight into Burlington, and there's hardly any space between Burlington and Chapel Hill and Durham and Raleigh. And just an hour south of Raleigh is Fayetteville. You check back in about 10, 15 years, the entire Piedmont of North Carolina might be one giant mega metro of about 12 million people or so. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve. And subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning more about U.S. geography. I'm talking about cities and counties and states and ranking them in all kinds of different categories. Talking about cross-country road tripping and everything I talk about comes from a little more nerdy type perspective. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out.